Hello everyone. In previous class, we have done with the components of the balance of payment and its accounting also. And in today's class, we are going to study about the balance of payment problems. It's nothing but the disequilibrium in the balance of payment. So first of all, International Monetary Fund and some of the international institutions says there should not be any disequilibrium in the balance of payment. The balance of payment should be a equal there should be a equilibrium there should be a balance between the total imports and the total exports there should not be any surplus there should not be any deficit so that all the countries in the globe can develop their self together but because of lot of differences it may be a regional differences it may be a unequal distribution of the resources this is not possible okay so to maintain or to manage this particular problem or to avoid the disequilibrium in the balance of payment the countries don't want the deficit balance of payment situations the problems in the balance of this particular statement okay either it's a deficit balance or it's a surplus balance is a matters now that is called as disequilibrium though the credit and the debit are written balanced in the balance of payment it may not remain the balanced always okay we used to balance the debit and credit in the balance of payment you might have seen in the balance of payment format very often debit exceeds the credit or the credit exceeds the debit causing the imbalance in the balance of payment account such an imbalance is called as the disequilibrium if there is uh, no equal balance in the credit and the debit it's nothing but the import and the export then it is called as disequilibrium this equilibrium may take place either in the form of the deficit or in the form of the surplus okay so either the deficit or the surplus is called as the disequilibrium types of disequilibrium let's see this cyclical disequilibrium cyclical disequilibrium in the balance of payment arises due to the business cycles okay you know the business cycles the growth stage the boom stage then after the contraction depression stage and all right so these all stages will decide the balance of payment this equilibrium okay by the cyclical patterns of the income the income cyclical patterns and different income elasticities which we have studied under the business economics by different price elasticities this one also we have studied under the business economics then secular disequilibrium secular or the long term disequilibrium in balance of payment occurs because of the long seated and deep rooted changes in the economy as it moves from one stage of the growth to the another stage so if any economy is moved from one stage of the growth to another stage then the chances of the disequilibrium is more okay so sometimes in the capital account usually secular disequilibrium is because of the capital account changes okay so in the long run this may happen so from the growth stage if any economy is moved to the contraction stage then deficit balance of payment situation may be found okay so even if any country is moved from developing to the developed then the surplus balance of payment situation can be observed then structural disequilibrium when structural changes take place in some sectors the economy they affect the import export trade of the country resulting in a structural disequilibrium so if there is a fundamental changes if there is a changes in the structure of the economy then that will affect the balance of payment also for example lpg policy which is affected the balance of payment and that's why we have observed surplus balance of trade under the current account we have observed the surplus balance of then fundamental disequilibrium when a country suffers a chronic disequilibrium in the balance of payment then it will be called as the fundamental disequilibrium because of the lack of fundamental strategies this particular disequilibrium may arise temporary disequilibrium there may be temporary disequilibrium caused by the random variations in the trade seasonal fluctuations may be there the effects of the weather or the agricultural productions these all things will affect the balance of payment that is called as a temporary disequilibrium these are the causes for the disequilibrium one changes in the exchange rate 
changes in foreign exchange rate in the form of the overvaluation or undervaluation of the foreign currency lead to the balance of payment disequilibrium when the value of the currency is higher in the relation to other currencies it is said to be overvalued as you know in international trade we have to pay in the foreign currencies correct so when the exchange rate is changing if you are not used the derivatives and all then the exchange rate always it's fluctuating it is volatile so because of the fluctuations in the foreign exchange market you need to pay the payment what you need to pay may be different it may become a costlier for you so that is also one of the cause for the disequilibrium in the balance of payment then changes in the national income if the national income is changed obviously it will affect the demand also and the balance of payment is also affected because of the national income price changes inflation or deflation is another cause of the disequilibrium in the balance of payment if there is inflation in the economy prices of the export increases as a result export falls at the same time the demand for the import increases so in case of the inflation the prices are increasing right so if the prices are increasing the prices for the raw material also will increase the cost of production will increase and because of this the export will become costlier so when the export is become costlier there may not be a demand and that will affect the balance of payment disequilibrium that will result the balance of payment disequilibrium stages of the economic development if a country is developing it will have the deficit in its balance of payment because it imports raw materials machinery capital equipment and services associated with the development process and the export primarily product so the economic development stage also matters so that will also affect the balance of payment statement so if the country is in a developing stage then in the current account you may find the surplus balance of payment but overall balance would be a disequilibrium maybe it is a deficit because services or the capital equipment machinery raw materials which may be available in the developing economy but they have taken the more financial help from the developed economies okay so this also caused the disequilibrium in the balance of payment then political conditions so political instability in a country is also creates the uncertainty among the foreign investors so that this also will affect the balance of payment disequilibrium capital movements are there the capital inflow and outflow okay so this also will affect the balance of payment if there is a more fdis from the home country to host country or the foreign country then the capital outflow is there that will cause the deficit balance of payment whereas if there is a capital inflow from the foreign investors foreign direct investment is made in the home country then there is a cash inflow or the capital inflow this will cause the surplus balance of payment natural factors natural calamities such as the failure of the rains or the coming floods may easily cause the disequilibrium in the balance of payment so as you know the natural calamities will directly affect the agricultural products and the gross domestic production so if there is more natural calamities and all the production may be less and the exports may be lower one then it will affect the balance of payment statement globalization due to the globalization there has been a more liberal and open atmosphere and the strategies regarding the globalization of the government is also matters so if the globalization rules and regulations are changed then that will affect the balance of payment statement so that's it for today's class in coming classes we are going to study regarding the measures to correct the balance of payment disequilibrium